so right now what we can do is we can start with a very simple thing does everyone know about uh, factor of a number n so let's say there is a number n then factor of the number is uh, that number which can divide it perfectly okay so let us start with a very easy problem it simply says that you have to find all factors of n so given a number n you simply have to find all the factors so what would be the easiest approach to do this uh, you can simply iterate right i think as easy as that because uh, if i talk about factor of any number n can you tell me uh, you can assume that the numbers are positive uh, can you tell me what will be the smallest factor of a positive number n smallest factor will be 1 for sure right and what will be the largest factor largest factor will be n so the factors of a number will definitely line between 1 to n so what you can do is you can simply write a for loop where your i goes from 1 to n and then you can simply check if your number is perfectly divisible by i that means i is a factor okay so the time complexity of this approach is order of n uh, but if you uh, take a note note at it you can uh, make it slightly better than order n okay how many of you can feel it can be made slightly better than order of n because think of it in this way uh, if you take a number like let's say your number is 100 just answer my question what, what will be the highest factor of 100 the highest factor of 100 will be 100 itself right and what will be the second highest factor of 100 second highest factor will be 50 right and this 50 is nothing but this is number upon 2 okay so one thing to be seen over here is when i said that the factors will lie from here to here if i instead of writing it like this i write it like this 1 from n by 2 and n by 2 to n so both these spaces are of equal length but in this much reason no factor is going to come isn't it in the reason from n by 2 plus 1 to n minus 1 no factor is going to come is that clear to everyone so you can simply ignore that reason okay got it so there will be no any factor in between uh, that reason that i have crossed okay and one thing is for sure that you always know that a uh, factor of number n will be that number itself. So what you can simply do is you can instead of running your loop from 1 to n, you can simply run it from 1 to n by 2. And if you happen to see that number is divisible by i, it means i is a factor. And to end with, you can also print the number n itself because n will also be a factor for sure. So you will check for this much part and then you will print this last number. This reason as you know is useless. So from order n I have brought down this to something like order n by 2. So from n we came to n by 2. Uh, can we do even better? Can we do even better? So some of you mentioned that we can do it in square root of n and we can actually do. Now before uh, we learn how to do it in square root of n there is a very important thing that you all should know that is again a very simple thing very small thing okay but that is used to solve many tough problems okay now hear that very clearly it simply says it, it's a concept and you must remember it as a concept that factors of a number n are symmetric about square root of n so if there is any number n then its factors will be symmetric about square root of n what do i mean by that is let's take an example let's say there is a number like 16 so can you tell me what is the square root of 16 the square root of 16 will be 4 okay so let me draw a number line and let's say 4 comes over here okay so this is the square root now can you tell me the factors of 16 factors of 16 will be 1 2 4 8 and 16 now one thing is quite evident what i mean by symmetry is 
that if there is a factor in the left of the square root, there will be a counterpart of this in the right side of the square root such that this into this is equal to the number. Similarly, if you take a look over here, if there is a 2 over here, then there is another thing 8 over here such that 2 into 8 is equal to 16. So this is what I mean to say when I mean to say that the factors are symmetric about the square root. So basically, if there is a number i over here such that i is a factor, then definitely towards the right side of this, there will be a number n by i, which is also a factor. So this is very important thing. So can I just say that instead of iterating from 1 to n by 2, maybe it makes sense to iterate from 1 till square root of n only. And while you are iterating from 1 to square root of n, then if you happen to see that a number i is a factor, then you can also print n upon i because you know for sure that n upon i will also be a factor because these factors are symmetric about this thing. Yeah, so this is a very powerful concept. Okay, this will be used in many problems. We'll see some simple problems today also. Uh, and you don't have to worry about those numbers which are not perfect squares because even if I take example of n equals to 20, what are the factors of 20? Can you tell me the factors of 20? Those are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10 and 20. So what will be the square root of 20? The square root of 20 will be I guess 4 point something, right? It will be 4 point something. That 4 point something, whatever it is, will come over here. Again, you can see that if you consider anything in the left hand side, there is another thing in the right hand side and so on. So even for, uh, you just take any case, whether the perfect square is a, uh, is a perfect integer, or the perfect square is uh, not a perfect integer, the factors will be symmetric about that line. Okay. Now, why does this happen? This is a common sense. Don't you feel this is a common sense? How many of you feel like this is an observation? Here, I am proving through an observation. Can somebody prove it through little bit of mathematics? Okay, I'll just try to tell that. See, if you take a number n, its square root that is over here, that is square root of n. Okay. Now tell me one thing. Uh, can it ever happen? So I used a word called as counterpart. By counterpart I meant to say that if there is a number x over here, then the number n by x will be lying over here such that the product of these two is equal to number n. Now if let's say the counterpart of this number is towards the left of this only. Okay, if the counterpart of this x is y such that x and y both are towards the left, then can it ever happen that x into y is equal to n? It can never happen because x is also smaller than root n and y is also smaller than root n. So their product will never be equal to n and the same logic for the right hand side. It can never happen that there are two counterparts x and y in the right hand side because both are greater than root n. So their product will be greater than the value n okay but uh, when you use this particular approach to uh, print all the factors you have to be careful about just one thing what is that one thing so let's say your number is 16 so for 16 you will run your loop from where to where you will run your loop from i equals to 1 to square root of 16 which is 4 and every time you would check that if uh, whatever is your number, here it is 16, if this number mod i is equals to 0, then you will print two things. You will print i and you will print counterpart of i which is 16 upon i. Uh, can something go wrong with this approach? Do you feel that uh, for a particular value of i, a factor might get printed two times? It can happen, right? It will happen because when your i is 1, you will print 1 and 16. When your i is 2, you will print 2 and 8. When your i is 3, it is not divisible. But when your i would be 4, both these values will be 4 and 4 each. So you would want to print 4 just for one time. I think you can handle this thing very easily. So before performing this print, you just check whether i and 16 by i, i and n by i, these two things are different or not. 
only if both things are different then you print both of them individually otherwise just print one of them so what will be the time complexity of this approach the time complexity of this approach will be square root of n so we came from order n to n by 2 to square root of n so these are the several ways to uh, find out all the factors of a number okay